E aí? All right. Let's get into some patch notes here. So we're going to have the zero. Let me turn this down just a little bit. We're going to have the 0 0.15 patch notes come this full wipe. First thing we're going to have is the factory rework. We saw it a little bit prehand. We saw some pastilly gameplay on it actually um, over at TwitchCon, I believe it was at, uh, but improved some AI behavior as well on the map and some added new task locations because, well, if you're going to change the map, you got to change the locations. So following that, there is going to be the new boss partisan. This boss is definitely tailored towards setting some traps. Now, here's the thing with the traps. He is only targeting people with poor karma. We'll get into that after this guy, as you can see right there below. But poor karma is not good. So if you go into a raid, let's say you come into a raid with everybody. Everyone's got really high karma, but you just you recruit a player that's got really poor karma. That guy might just taint the group, you know, so he he's going to target people with uh, tripwires and stuff like that. So I don't know if he's going to be uh, attackable um, or if he's only appearing due to this. I do not know. I don't know how this is going to work. Um, but uh, very, uh, he says right here, the boss appears in forest type locations. So this could be shoreline. It's got some forest in it. Definitely woods, obviously, um, but stuff like that. So I don't know if uh, that little part of uh, customs um, is uh, like tailored towards that. No idea, um, but going to be interesting. Uh, calming from that is going to be the karma so karma is going to be the very hidden parameter that we're all questioning how this is going to work we did have scav karma before i don't know if this is going to be a generally good karma overall that's my expectation based on what i've heard but basically the karma is going to be triggered based on a lot of different things of honest or dishonest or open play style as it says here following that there is the uh the sound that's going to trigger when things are changed. So it says here, the number of triggers that change the volume, the value of karma will always be increasing and triggers themselves will be adjusted and balanced further. And in some cases, karma changes can be tracked by distinctive sound notifications. So we might hear like a or like a ding when you go up or down in that uh, karma. Following that, we do have the map to map travel. I do not know when this is released. I believe it's going to be released on wipe, but there is speculation that it might be released come Friday. Um, so we don't know what is happening with that for sure. But basically, map to map travel allows you to actually travel from map to map, as it says here, as well as potentially transiting, transmitting. I, I can't speak um transmitting some items to your stash in the process you can also transit with a group of people whether it be your group uh or a so you're a solo raider and you can go with a group of people i guess here it says that it's um you have to be all in the same zone so if you have somebody you went into a raid with and they're on the other side of the map and you try to trigger it only the people that are in the zone will go i think that's what it's trying to say here um but very interesting to see how this is going to work. They added some achievements um, and stuff like that to get while doing this, which is uh, the added the marathon achievement for visiting all locations in one raid. So I don't know what all locations entails. I don't know if you can go to labs per se, right? Uh, maybe you find a lab key card in one of your raids and you can still go to labs. I don't know. Um, it depends on the location uh, and where you're going from that location is what I'm assuming. Um, but pretty cool. I love that idea. Now, coming from here, tripwires. Yeah, tripwires is going to be an interesting topic. The best part about it is it is not able to be bought on the flea market, and it cannot be found in raid. It's only available for a purchase after completing Jaeger's task chain. So that's going to be very interesting moving forward. So people who have a lot of time, aka streamers, um, they're going to have these items before other people. So we're going to see them figure out the kinks and bugs before we experience it and go, oh, well, here's the problems, right? So a lot of times the streamers do have that um, for us, uh, the players, a general player base. It's very helpful when the streamers go way ahead. Yeah, it kind of sucks. We feel like we're way behind, but they do test a lot of the things uh, when we are coming up to it and they apply fixes while we're getting to the uh, general standpoint so that's why they appreciate streamers because they're kind of like the testing people right 
Um, but these uh, these trip wires are going to be using the B key to uh, on appropriate grenades. So only specific grenades are going to be able to use. So that's F1 grenades. Um, I believe the G grenades and the or sorry, the RGD grenades and the impact grenades. I don't know of any others. Those were the three that were in the trailer. Um, so I don't know of any others that are going to be able to do it, but we'll see. The greater the grenade must be in the hands to switch the tripwire mode. Uh, and then once you have tripwire mode, you have a specific length that you can set it right. So um very very interesting to see how these are gonna work, especially when the boss places them for people who have poor reps. So gonna be interesting. Uh, coming from here, we have bipods and weapon mounting. I mean, using the tripod, uh, the toggle button, you can do control V, which is the default, or um, to mount a weapon, the player must aim at a suitable horizontal or vertical. So leaning around corners, stuff like that, possibly will allow you to mount the weapon by using the V key by default, which is very interesting. And I'm excited to see how that's gonna go forward. The recoil and stamina consumption is reduced when firing. A mounted weapon as well so that's going to be really good mounting well prone is only available if the bipods are installed and deployed on the weapon so it's going to be very interesting to see how this applies and it's going to be really nice actually in a lot of situations uh so new hideout zone gear rack the gear rack zone is added to extend part of the hideout as three upgrade levels each level has a mannequin which can be used to display only gear equipable on your pmc so you can equip gear on it and you get three of them if you max it out and you can display your list of kits and i'm sure you can equip them from there too so that's pretty cool i like that a lot less um things taking up your space in your stash right so the new hideout zone cultist circle so the cultist circle is located outside the main hideout so we can actually leave our hideout which is interesting um i don't know exactly how that's going to work but i'm kind of interested uh, but you can sacrifice up to five items to the cultist circle. The value of each sacrifice item is added up. The total determines the value of items received as a gift from the cultist. The cultist cannot deliver items while you are in the hideout. If the value of a single sacrifice is above a certain threshold, that is a 25% chance to receive items needed to for active quests and unfinished hideout zones. I like that concept. The value of the sacrifice items is further increased by the bonuses from the sacred amulet and the hideout management skill. So players who have purchased the unheard edition will have the cultist circle built instantly. Kind of a pay to win factor there. Not too happy about that, but um, I do have the unheard edition, so I will have that um, and I can make a video around it too if you guys do want to see that. But very interesting moving forward. I'm Curious to see what we can do with that, but the hideout management skill, get to crafting anything and everything that you can in your hideout. Like if you can craft it and it will be used at some point, craft it. Like it doesn't matter. You find some stuff in raid, you're able to craft into something you might need later or you don't even need, but you can sell, do it. Like every single time you craft in anything, increases your hideout management skill when you're upgrading everything and your crafting skill right so it's very slight but get to doing it right uh ai enemy reaction system so they added a variation in ai behavior when spotting another ai or player in pve mode behavior model is chosen depending on the lore relationship between the factions so possible reactions instant aggression attack friendly on less shown aggression total friendliness warning and attacking if not obeyed neutral unless shown aggression so the choice of the weather to be aggressive on the mood of the bot and the faction of the target for example if an ai bear encounters an ai usec they are more likely to engage them but not necessarily 100 percent than they would be if they encountered an ai bear so here's the thing with that i really like it i think this has already been kind of tested uh, I don't know for sure. The AI mood thing is interesting to me because if you had higher scav rep, you influence scavs more. But even if you had 6.0 scav rep, you could tell them to move or follow you and they would still deny you. I wonder if they were still, uh, if this was a mood thing that they were testing at one point. I'm not sure, but they would still deny you and you're kind of like, what? Because they always accept you, right? But the, the off chance that sometimes they would deny you. So I don't know. I'm, cu I'm curious to see how this is going to work. Um, but the chance of meeting a more aggressive AI PMC varies uh, depending on the location. For example, on ground zero under level 20, the bots are more friendly. And in the labs, they are most aggressive. So yeah, PVE mode is going to be pretty interesting when it comes to AI. Um, so new weapons, equipment, look, uh, the equipment and loot. 
but we have the three variations of the uh uzi here we have the 9 by 19 submachine gun uzi 9 by 19 pistol version and the uzi i guess smg submachine gun maybe it's a different variant i don't know um the sr3m 9 by 39 compact assault rifle is going to be interesting we have the desert eagle uh the light machine gun m60 it's calling my name i really want it i just want to use it to go to town i'm excited to see how that's going to work updated weapon models so these are pretty interesting too seeing how these items the vss the as val were very common weapons pp91 ketter very interesting that they updated that one too but might be really fun and cool looking right so new calibers 50 action express i mean new ammo 50 caliber gonna be pretty interesting going with that uh the uh 50 caliber uh, m60 as well as the i'm uh, sorry the 50 caliber desert eagle so now other weapon improvements new weapon attachments adjusted the functionality for pistol grips on the makarov pm pi pistol if there is a quick drop button on the grip the interaction animation with the pistol is changed uh, improved the AUG AI AUG A3 visuals, updated the grip animation, and added a visual operating gas piston. I I like that. The, it's the small things that really matter, right? Uh, the small details. So added some animation variations depending on the installed attachments for new and updated weapons, updated the grenade animation, and added new types of equipment, armor, helmets, loot, new options for character customization. What does that mean? I don't know. I mean, when wipe happens, we might be able to see it. I might be able to put a beard on my character. Who knows? I, I might be able to do it. I won't be able to get the white patch, unfortunately, but maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, quality of life improvements, though. Uh, so we have optic adjustments, some, uh, some scopes that are going to be refined. I'm guessing they added more notches, so it's easier to understand. The night force scope that nobody ever touched with a 10-foot pull. Might get a, you know, might get a change. I might like it. Might be good. Uh, default hotkeys for smooth adjustments are Alt plus scroll wheel now. Pretty interesting. Selecting grenades with G. New icon with hotkey G is available on the quick access bar. It will display a grenade the player will equip first. Oh, that's nice. It tells you which grenade you're going to be equipping when you do hit G. So that's pretty convenient. The flashlight tactical device operation mode um, added the ability to activate tactical devices and flashlights by pressing or holding a hotkey. Interesting. Uh, manually value entry in game settings. Uh, added the ability to manually enter values in the game settings, for example, when adjusting mouse sensitivity. Thank you, huge. I wanted very slight changes, but I had to use the scroll thing, so that was kind of annoying. Uh, hotkey adjustments updated the sorting order of hotkeys in the control settings action melee weapon has been reassigned to you melee attack has been reassigned to you on double click so that used to be v before they changed it because of the mounting with the uh actual uh, tripods so balancing changes simplified the object objectives for uh tasks set up in long road thank you <laughs> setup was such a long road if you want to use that as a lack of a better term um but setup was such a long and annoying task to get done so i greatly appreciate it for the casual players like myself out there we can actually get that done now so that's nice um completely removed trade offers to class six body armor plate carriers and all that stuff which is nice i kind of like that you gotta find them change the availability of ammo on the flea market now all ammo with less than 42 penetration is allowed on the flea market with few exceptions okay i like that increase the damage of 7639 uh 5439 and 9 by 21 7639 has more damage whoa slightly reduce the damage of 556 whoa ak's are gonna go skyrocketing i'm interested okay so they reduce 556 five, well here's the thing you gotta remember 556 five, knowns for shooting a lot faster more accurate right you might get killed just based off blunt damage not necessarily pen these are more based around pen well seven sixes right it's more based around pen so they doing more damage is going to be pretty interesting to see and 545 is mostly seen in ak's too so ak's are might gonna you know be more of a known thing here than 556s five, later on. Uh, so technical changes implemented the anti-clipping system, new elements of helmets, classes. So that's nice. So basically, if you had uh, the headphones, contacts, or whatever, if you wore the uh, one helmet uh, that was high ricochet chance, I forget, it's an early game helmet, your headphones would go through it and you're kind of like, meh, whatever, right? But they fixed that, so that's nice. Animations 
Reworked animations play back system to increase the accuracy of first and third person synchronization where possible. Optimize left shoulder animation for most smoothness. That's nice. So when you do the left shoulder peak, it's going to be more convenient. Added special door interaction animations. The number of interactive objects animations will increase further in the future updates. So I like that. That's actually something they did in the alpha. Um, they had special door interaction animations. So I'm curious to see how many they added there. Uh, following that, we do have the graphics redesign with the weather conditions. We talked about that. Um, the weather conditions are going to be pretty interesting. They fixed some bugs with that. It's unpredictable weather conditions. So going to be awesome there. Improved cloud visuals, cloud reactions, uh, updated FSR technology. Love that. Remove support for SFR. Uh, sorry. FSR version one. Okay. Switch the in-game session to summer. That's good because that's kind of where we're going. I bet you halfway through wipe or something, they'll change it to fall. I don't know if they'll go winter or not, depending on how long wipe is, right? Um, sounds improve the environments and sound systems. So this is gonna be huge. Transfer the whole algorithm of multi-threaded calculations. This is gonna be interesting. Active headset adjustments and improve the separation of weapon sounds and other sounds. That's huge. Added the splitting of sound subgroups and increases. You know what? In general, this is gonna be huge. I'm interested to see how this uh applies. Following that, uh the anti-cheat update that's gonna be good. Implemented protection against a series of exploits. That's great. And then protection against series of exploits uh, related to network synchronization. Also nice. And then the list of changes here, if you do want to read them. Uh, thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. And I hope to see you guys in the raid. Um, but I'm going to continue my 24-hour stream. So I'll see you again later.